I always have to be very careful in the beginning because that's when they take all the bloopers. <laughs> and now when I look at the camera, I'm like, what are you gonna do to me today, editing crew? Hey everyone, welcome to the Vue.js episode in the server-side rendering with JavaScript Framework series. So if you haven't used Vue.js before, it's a really cool framework with a really cool logo. And one of the reasons why I really like it is because it comes with a server-side rendering library called Nuxt. And with Nuxt, you kind of just like set up some configuration and then you have a server-side rendered app. And it's really, really easy to do. So today we're going to set up Nux to not only server-side render our assets, but to split up our static assets from our server assets. So let's uh, dive down into the laptop and get started. So I'm here in the command line and I'm going to create a new project. So mkdir, I'm gonna call it Nuxt SSR, and then I'm gonna CD into it. So now I'm gonna use the view CLI, which you can npm i-g view CLI. But since I have it already installed, I'm going to use it to bootstrap up my app. So I'm going to use the view CLI, but I'm going to actually use a uh, starter template, which is nux-community slash starter template. And this SRC is actually what I'm going to call the folder inside of my project because it's my source. So project names, call it source. And I'm really just going to go through and use all the defaults. So now that I have that done, I'm going to make a public folder and I'm also going to make a functions folder, which will contain our static assets and our server dynamic assets respectively. So now I'm going to CD into the source folder and I'm going to npm install, or if you want to use yarn, which I'm going to do, I'm going to install everything. And now I could open a code editor here, but instead I'm going to CD out and open up my editor. So you can see right here, we have this source folder. And source has all these files. And we actually really don't need all these files. This is what the template gives us. But what we do want to look at is this pages folder. So inside of pages, we have this index.view file. And you can see we have this template, we have this script section, and this style section. And all this together is known as a single file component. So you've ever been scrolling through your social media feeds and you're wondering why everyone's talking about SFCs? Well, SFC is single file component. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna delete all of the default content and the default template, and we're gonna start from scratch. So I'm going to cd into the source folder, and I'm going to add isomorphic fetch. And isomorphic fetch will make it so we can do HTTP requests on the client and the server. And with that installed, I can now go into my component, and I can import fetch from isomorphic fetch. And then inside of this export default, I'm going to create a method called async data. So async data isn't just a method I made up, it's a method that Vue and Nuxt uh, provides for you. And what you do is you can resolve any asynchronous data into your component. And in our case, we're going to be retrieving a list of facts from the server. So this is exactly where we want to do our network request. And if you're wondering what the async keyword means, it means that we're returning a promise from this method. And so this is all brand new, snazzy, fancy, async await ES 2017 code. So inside here, I'm going to get the response back by fetching from this URL. And since it's asynchronous, I can await it and I can pretend that I don't have to use a callback. And then now I can get the response back as JSON, which also is asynchronous, so I will await on that. And with my facts, I'll just return it as a destructured object. So with our async data out of the way, we can actually go and make our template. So I'm going to create an unordered list and then an li. I'm going to use the v4 directive to say, let's render the fact in the facts. And this is going to give us an error because it wants us to use a key directive. And I don't really have an ID or anything at the moment. So I'm going to do something cheap to get rid of this error. I'm going to say fact.text, but don't do this at home. So now inside here, I'm going to render out the fax text and then just paste in some really bad styles I made myself. So now with this done, let's go into the source folder and I'm going to write yarn dev, but for NPM users, it would be NPM run dev. And this will spin up a nice little Nuxt server for us. 
So it's building, and we have six problems. And if you look at what the problems are, it's actually all stylistic. So this default template uses a standard uh, style guide, which doesn't want semicolons, but I quite like my semicolons. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go into the ESLint and just get rid of this extends standard section. So it's not going to complain to me about how I'm writing my code anymore. But if you like the standard you know, style guide, go forth and do that yourself. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to run the dev server again. And it's now on localhost 3000. And you can see outside of this padding issue that our site is up and running. And if we go and actually view the page source, we can see that there is HTML. This was a server-side rendered app. And we can even see our window data located in the script. So we have a server-side rendered app working locally, but all the code that we're using works in a modern browser, but it's not going to work in older browsers. We're using const and async await and destructured objects and all that fancy new stuff. So we're going to need to be able to compile that code down so it works in older browsers. And fortunately, we can do that with Babel. And even better, Nuxt has an integration with Babel with just a few lines of configuration. We can get our code working with older browsers. So let's get that going. So before we can get Babel running, we're going to actually need to go into our package.json. And what I'm going to do right here is, is I'm just going to add a few dependencies. So down here in dev dependencies, I'm going to add these four. I'm going to add module resolver, transform runtime, preset ES2015, and preset zero. And all of these things are going to be needed to make sure our code works in the older browsers. So I'm going to open up my command line, and I'm going to yarn. So it just goes through and installs everything. Or you could just use npmi. And now that that's set up, I'm going to go into this file called nuxt.config.js. So nux.config.js is this big configuration file that you can do lots of different things with. We have this section up here for heads, which is the head tag for your app. And down here, we have this section called build. And this is where we're actually going to be able to configure how our application gets built, where it gets built to, all that great stuff. So I'm going to specify a public path. And I'm going to say that it is in our public folder. And this will be where our static assets are. Then I'm going to use this vendor array. And this is our vendored libraries. So in this case, isomorphic fetch. I'm going to use extract CSS. And then now I get to finally use my Babel setup. So inside this Babel object is where I can actually set how I want my code compiled down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my presets. So I'm going to use the ES2015 and the preset 0 and the stage 0. Now I'm going to specify a plugin. So for this plugin, I'm going to use the transform runtime plugin, which is what's going to help me convert my async await code down to just you know, regular ES5 code. So now that I have my plugin specified, I'm going to do a yarn build to build out my Nuxt app. So open up the command line, say yarn build. And you can see it builds without a problem. So while it builds, it doesn't build to the right place. I want it to build out to my functions folder because that's where my server app is going to be. So above build, I'm going to set a build directory. And that's going to be dot dot slash functions slash nuxt because that's go up one directory and store it inside the functions folder. So I'm going to open up the command line again and I'm going to run yarn build. And you can see that when I do that, we get an error. And it says that it can't find the transform runtime plugin. And that's because now that we're going to the functions folder, it's going to look for dependencies in that folder. And we don't have anything there. So what we're going to need to do is set up a package.json and install everything into that folder. So I'm going to open up the functions folder. And I'm going to create a new file called package.json. And I'm going to paste in this package.json and all the needed dependencies. And if you check the link in the description, I'll have a little gist where you can just go and copy and paste this too. But what we're doing here is, is that we're including dependencies for Babel. We're doing some other peer dependencies for Vue.js and Nuxt, and also doing Firebase Admin and Firebase Functions. 
So now I'm going to CD out of my source, CD into functions, and then do a yarn or an npm i to install it. And with that being done, I'm going to go back into source and run yarn build again. And as you can see, we don't have any errors, and we have our Nux folder. So we have our server dependency set up in our functions folder, but it's also going to contain all of our static assets. And we don't want to deliver static assets from our function server. We want to deliver that from Firebase hosting CDN. Because the static assets are like our images, our CSS, our client-side JavaScript. Those don't need to be generated by a server. We only need to generate our server-side rendered HTML. So what we need to do is we need to take these static assets and we need to put them in our public folder so they're served from Firebase hosting CDN and separately from our server rendered assets. So let's dive down and get started on that. So I'm in the terminal for the source folder and I'm going to CD out. And now I'm going to do the CP to copy assets from functions, nuxt slash dist. So dist will contain a lot of our static assets. And I want to copy them using dash r, since it's recursive, and copy it out to public slash assets. And now if we go into the public folder, we can see we have all of our assets just copied over. So now that we have the static assets copied over, we can actually go and set up our server code. So inside of functions, I'm going to create an index.js, and I'm going to require from Firebase functions. And also nuxt express. And then create an express app to get my server started. So the first thing I need to do for my Nux server is set up a configuration. So I'm going to paste in this configuration right here. It basically says we're not in dev mode. Our build dir is a Nux folder, which you can see right there. And our public path is the public folder. And so using this configuration, I'll create a new Nux server by passing in the config. So now I'm going to handle requests through this handle request method, which will take in a request and return a response. I'm going to use nuxt.renderRoute. And I'm going to say go to the root route since we only have one page in our app. And this returns a promise of a result. And the result has a HTML. So I can say res.send result.html. But we also could have errors. So I'm going to use a catch block. And if there's any errors, I'm going to send the error message. So now that we have this handle request, I can say app.get all routes handle this request. And now all I have to do is export the function. I'll call it SSR app functions.htbs dot on request pass through the app. So this right here is really awesome because it's just a few lines of code and we are server side rendering this HTML. But what we aren't doing is we aren't setting up the CDN caching for our dynamic server side rendered response. So what we can do is we can go up to handle request and we can set the cache control header. So with cache control, we'll say this is a public cacheable asset. It has a max age of 600 seconds and an S max age of 1200 seconds. Max age says this will be cached in the user's local browser cache for 600 seconds. And S max age says that this will be cached on the CDN level for 1200 seconds. So now that we have our server code set up, I'm going to go and run this locally. And to do that, I'm going to need the Firebase CLI. So you can install the Firebase CLI with npm i-g firebase-tools. But since I have it installed, I'm going to say Firebase init hosting. So I'm not going to choose a default project, but you can choose whatever default project you want. I'm going to say my public directory is the public directory. And I'm not going to configure any uh, single page app routes. And then inside of public, I'm going to delete the index.html and the 404 because I don't need them. And then I'm going to go and open up Firebase.json. So in Firebase hosting, I'm going to set up a rewrite for my server-side rendered app. And this rewrite will be able to tell Cloud Functions in Firebase hosting how to communicate with each other. So I'm going to say, for all routes, call this function called SSR app. And SSR app is what we named our Cloud Function, so it'll know how to talk to each other. So now I'm going to serve this locally with Firebase serve only functions hosting. And I'm going to set a port of 5004. 
So it looks like our app is working, but if we open up the console, we can see we have these errors of this unexpected token. And if we go into the network panel and we click on one of the assets, you can see that it is looking for this asset in a public folder. And what is happening here is, is this is not being recognized as a static asset. So it's going to our server and it's trying to generate an HTML response, which is why we have an unexpected token. So what we need to do is, is we need to fix how we're setting up our static assets. So if you ever see this method, it's because you're generating HTML rather than serving your static asset. So to fix this, I'm going to go open up the Nuxt config.js, and I'm going to change the public path to just be slash, the root of my directory. And then I'm going to go into the index.js, and then also change that to slash. And if you're wondering, yes, you could just require this config file and use it right here. But just to make things explicit for this tutorial, I am, I'm using two separate versions. Now that I've changed the config, I'm going to open up the terminal and cd into the source folder and build the application again. And now that it's built successfully, I'm going to cd out and I'm going to make sure to copy the assets again. Go to functions, nuxt, dist, and this time I'm just going to copy them flat into public. So when I open up public, you can see we have this nice flat structure. And now we are ready to deploy. So I'm just going to say Firebase deploy. And I can now go visit this URL. And in the browser, we have our nice server-side rendered application. And if I right-click and view source, we can see it's a nice server-side rendered application. So that's all there is to setting up Nuxt on Firebase Hosting. If you like this video, make sure to check out the next one. We're going to go profile it using the Chrome DevTools and web page test. So that's all for today. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. You looked up with your eyes, and then you looked up with your head. So. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, oh, hi there.